All right. Hello and welcome again, everyone. I'm your host, Ali, CEO and co-founder of Node, the leading digital customer experience platform for all things ingredients. Um, our goal with this series, as you know, is to share perspectives that you need in order to navigate the changing landscape of our industry. Um, we have another amazing guest with us today. So let's get started. I am thrilled to welcome Jim Zally, president and CEO of Ingredion. Um, you guys are all familiar with this company. They're headquartered in the suburbs of Chicago. Ingredion is a leading global ingredient company serving customers in more than 120 countries. Whether you're looking to provide uh, healthier or more sustainable products, Ingredion's experts make it possible for you to create food and beverages with the right combination of consumer benefits and the taste they desire. Um, I'm so excited to have Jim with us today. Uh, to tell us a little bit more about their story. Jim, welcome, and thanks so much for taking the time. Anything else you want to share on um, your background or about Ingredion before we get started? Uh, Ali, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation to speak to you today. Um, we're very, very um, pleased with the relationship we have with your company and the potential that it, it affords us. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm celebrating this year uh, 40 years in the food ingredient industry. And obviously, over the course of that uh, lengthy period of time, I've seen a lot of change. And um, and digital transformation uh, in our industry is one of the things that's obviously accelerated a lot of change, certainly within the last 10 uh, to 20 years. And it's only accelerating uh, right now. But um, I have been with this company in one way, shape, or form for my entire career. So it's a rarity today um, to uh, have been with a company with the kind of tenure that I have, but it says something also about uh, who Ingredion is and the opportunities that I think that it affords uh, people and the things that can inspire people to you know, do good in the world and also um, do good in the industry for, for which we uh, service. So um, that's just a little bit about me. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's 40 years, but I still feel incredibly uh, energized every day I come to work. That's an incredible accomplishment. What brought you originally to the industry? You know, um, I came from a family that worked in the food industry, but it was more in the grocery industry. Mm -hmm. And I, that led me to, um, obtain a degree in food science and technology that I then got an advanced degree in. So food and food ingredients has, has been in my DNA. And then I was just very fortunate to have gotten a job with uh, National Starch, um, which was acquired by Corn Products in 2010 and led to the rebranding to become Ingredient in 2012, uh, way back in 1983. And so that's a little bit about, you know, my, um, my history and kind of love affair with food and food ingredients. That's amazing. You don't get to hear stories like that all the time. I also am kind of child of this industry, so I can certainly relate. Um, okay. Let's jump into the main questions that our audience really wants to hear from you about. Um, first off, you know, we're seeing more and more suppliers increase investments in their digital capabilities, especially as it's related to, um, uh, things that are customer facing. Where are some of the biggest opportunities that you see for ingredient on when it comes to customer facing digital initiatives? Yeah, I think that ingredient on um, has been embracing digital transformation uh, in a significant way as an organization. We set it up as a big goal when I became CEO in 2018 um, to uh, establish a goal to stand up what we described as more than 200 use cases that could create a greater than $100 million of value. And we have overlaid that with actual finance um, you know, support to give it internal credibility and to track how we look at returns on investment for digital investments, just knowing the inherent um, uh, potential that it was going to afford us to drive a customer-centric growth culture. So we're very, very uh, focused on customers being easy to do business with, 
and embedding and driving a people-centric growth culture. And we see digital engagement as more and more important um, to that um, imperative, you know, for us. So when it comes to um, making things just easier for customers to access our uh, information about our products, our formulations, our recommendations, our capabilities, um, you know, the solutions that we offer. One of the things we also like to promote is the fact that we co-create with customers mm -hmm. in uh, our idea labs and doing that uh, more in a virtual medium, being able to connect uh, multiple stakeholders from multiple locations at the same time um, has really reinvented, I think, the way that we provide technical service and support and um, and partnership and co-create with customers. So we've embraced the digital aspects of customer engagement and customer reach. Uh, very holistically, we've outfitted our labs and culinary kitchens to make them culinary studios. Mm -hmm. um, so the the whole aspect of putting the customer at the center of everything we do, just an interesting fact about something that's maybe unique with our company is that in every meeting room at Ingredion globally, there is a red chair and the red chair is meant to represent a customer. And what it is, is it's, there to allow us to catch ourselves if ever we're in a conversation to stop and ask ourselves what would a customer say or think if they heard this discussion right now and i think that that is again um, a little bit about the uh, the culture that exists and then thinking about again the potential of how uh, digital capabilities um, can help us with uh, enhancing our customer facing um, opportunities. You know, we, we, we view um, the experience that we want to provide, recognizing that, you know, we don't live in a nine to five world anymore, but we're a uh, 24 seven world. Um, and, and, and customers want to be able to do their work and connect with companies like Ingredient that can help them uh, do their jobs wherever they are, whenever they would like. And so it's less now for us about customer service, and we refer to it as customer indulgence. And so being able to be well represented on marketplaces and have our offerings there and provide the self service uh, aspects uh, are are really top of mind for us. And we don't come at these things from a cost-effective standpoint, primarily. We come at it again from the uh, experience we want to offer and allow the customer to indulge in all that we offer uh, to them. That was an amazingly thoughtful answer. Thank you for all that. First off, I can tell you that um, a lot of people are about to steal this red chair idea from you. <laughs> um, it's a great one. And what an, a, a perfect way to remind the team of what matters most in all meetings. I mean, that, I've, I actually have never heard of somebody doing that. And it's, it's a fantastic idea. Let me go back to something you said a little bit earlier that I thought was also equally amazing. So uh, I certainly agree with you that a lot of customers want to be able to um, browse your catalog to you know, understand your solutions faster than ever. And, you know, they're in the lab, they're working on something and they probably jump out, get on their computer and want to, you know, understand what's in the market and being able to give customers that responsiveness so that they understand your value proposition really quickly is something we hear from them all the time. You know, let me browse the catalog, learn what's there, learn what the solutions are, learn what the value prop is. And then I will reach out to the expert at their organization. And the suppliers that are able to do that the fastest are usually the ones that have a seat at the table 
as that um, you know chemist formulator is going through their evaluation process. So you know it sounds like you guys are, are well ahead of the tide there. I think that again, we have been talking about digital transformation and making sure that it's well understood and well defined what it means and you know how it differs from simple digitization for example mm -hmm. um, for a number of years now and i talk about the uh, importance of bringing value from digital use cases at every one of my ceo webcasts and in fact Ingredion has an award that we give out every year. It's a CEO award as part of our annual CEO awards. And we give an award out for digital transformation, the progress or the use case that's been best operationalized and has created the most value or is having the biggest impact mm -hmm. you know, in the company. And, and typically there's a customer requirement that, needs to be met from a standpoint of impact uh, for that um, digital investment that we may have made that could help us to uh, differentiate ourselves um, and just engage with customers um, you know differently so um, we're all in I guess you could say in relationship to um, to this discipline and and what it means and of course uh, right now we're embracing um, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and what it um, you know can mean as the next chapter from a standpoint of generative AI and how that can enable us to engage with customers much more efficiently such that when we do want to have and the customer wants to have the human interaction overlay to all of the foundational work that they can do on their own to understand our offerings and understand the potential to work with Ingredion, we, we view it as an accelerator or an enhancement. And so um, I heard a great expression very recently in relationship to um, the either threat or opportunity of artificial intelligence, depending on how you want to view it. And we've done a survey recently here in our company to ask employees directly, do you view it as more of a an opportunity for you or do you view it as more of a threat? And I would say that the majority of our employees, I think based on the way we're positioning it, are viewing it more as an opportunity, but there are those that are surely concerned about what it means potentially to their role and their jobs um, going forward. But the expression that I've used with them, which is a wonderful expression, is people are discussing the impact of artificial intelligence in the medical field, for example, in the future. And questions have been posed as to whether or not artificial intelligence will replace doctors. And what I've said is, what I heard, which I really subscribe to, is the question isn't whether artificial intelligence will replace doctors, but will those doctors that don't embrace AI be replaced by doctors that do? And so if our employees are embracing the potential for digital capabilities, artificial intelligence to enhance their own effectiveness to do their jobs and to be impactful. And we have a value. One of our values is being preferred. Mm -hmm. And that has a triple meaning. One is that we enable consumer preferred innovation for our customers who are food companies. One is that we want them to um, be preferred as a, have ingredient on be preferred as a supplier, but also individually. If you're a salesperson, you should want to be the preferred salesperson that's calling on that account. 
And so we think, again, individuals that are leveraging technology and leveraging um, you know, digital capabilities to be more impactful, time efficient, um, will help them be preferred um, and give us a competitive advantage as well. So that's how, again, we're thinking about it in, and uh, infusing that uh, throughout our um, throughout our organization. You know, we do use social media to engage with customers, for example, in group conversations and project work. Um, we're, believe it or not, we are experimenting with the metaverse to build custom events uh, for customers uh, where we can drive innovations regardless of where, um, you know, anyone may be uh, based. Um, and again, connecting our idea labs with customers around the world, because the food industry, as you know, um, is a very local business built on local tastes. Mm -hmm. So customizing formulations and getting uh, foods to taste great uh, based on how we influence, for example, texture and doing that on a local level, but leveraging our global capabilities and bringing that all to a venue uh, is, uh, is something that digital can help us with and is helping with us with a lot right now. I, I can tell you that, you know, we're, we talk to a lot of, um, you know, C-suite folks in the industry and the depth and breadth of your digital initiatives is definitely in the top quartile. Um, so it should, it should certainly be applauded, which leads to my um, next question, which is that, you know, 2023 is not like 2021, um, although for Ingredion, um, you know, I think you're probably outperforming a lot of your peers, but there are certainly um, market headwinds right now. And for some industry leaders, um, you know, they're using this as an opportunity to, you know, cut back on some of their initiatives. And for other leaders, they're almost using this as an opportunity to accelerate when they know others are cutting back. How do you view that balance? I think that what's most important in times of uncertainty or challenge um, in economic um, headwinds that companies always stay committed and focused to what their strategy is and how they are uh, aspiring to to develop competitive advantage and what they're and being very clear about what their winning aspiration is. And so I think for us, we have, uh, you know, refreshed our strategy. We've leveraged um, a strategic framework called play to win, which has enabled us to clearly define what our winning aspiration is. And so I think with that clarity, you need to stay committed to the long-term um, you know, intent of um, creating shareholder value and, 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 and differentiating yourselves in the marketplace and pursuing competitive advantage. And digital today has to be, you know, part of that equation. That all being said, you have to be very uh, thoughtful and you have to be uh, very mindful of the investments, both in capital as well as ongoing structural operating costs that you will add to your organization. And that's why it's extremely important that you set up a financial framework and hold sponsors and individuals in your organization for these technologies and investments to track and report with post-project reviews in a requisite amount of time, how are the returns being manifested and being and asking some tough questions to make sure that people are leveraging the, the, the inherent potential of these uh, systems and, 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 and ideas. The one thing we have found that is where you can fall down is you don't resource sufficiently the uh, investment in the system from a data governance standpoint. You know, people want to get to the 
very attractive output um, and to, you know, see how a, you know, example ideally could work. But before you can get there, you have to have data integrity and you have to have that being made, you know, to be, to be good data and to be overseen um, from a data governance standpoint um, so that the information that you're generating is current and is meaningful. And oftentimes what we have found, and in some cases we have neglected to upfront define the data governance requirements to support uh, a new software investment. And then we don't maximize the potential. And so you have to be very realistic and you have to be very choiceful, but you have to do the blocking and tackling if you're going to ultimately get the significant potential disruptive change that you're looking for. Um, but oftentimes companies, I think, miss that. And it's something that I know we're very mindful of and we ask those extremely tough questions in peer reviews when we approve our IT capital budgets. And so that would be uh, just one piece of, um, you know, advice that I would uh, provide. Uh, for our audience, um, I would highly encourage you to go back and listen to the last two minutes of this again. Uh, I cannot underline the importance of what Jim just said. Uh, most of these digital projects fail because the underlying foundation, specifically the data, is not there. You want to create an amazing customer experience? Well, so does everyone. But if you don't have organized and harmonized product data that feeds that portal, then it's not possible to create these amazing experiences. And Jim just communicated it as clearly as I've ever heard a CEO communicate that. I can't agree with it more. Um, to close out this time, we like to ask uh, uh, one last question, which is, are there any words of encouragement or a general message you'd like to relay to your employees at Ingredion, especially those that may be working on digital initiatives right now? Well, I'm hoping that whatever I say is not new news to them, because again, I do address the topic of digital uh, transformation in each and every one of my uh, quarterly employee global webcasts. Um, we talk about a lot of things. We talk about the importance of cybersecurity um, uh, and the education that we've brought there. And now we're spending a lot of time talking about artificial intelligence and the potential and not to fear it, but to embrace it, the training that we're going to be providing to employees to have them be more effective um, in their jobs and to be current um, so that they um, don't have their skills uh, erode and become obsolete um, because we want we have a we have a responsibility to our employees to invest in them to train them and make some of the training um, you know easy and you know we we are very very committed to having technology enable our employees to work more efficiently and help manage their stress level, um, but also give them a lot of excitement and enthusiasm for how digital technology and digital transformation can transform the work they do in support of the customer and in support of us delivering competitive advantage. So it makes makes their jobs fun. And so I know my chief digital transformation officer and chief information officer um, and I are very aligned on that, on that mission. And um, our employees can expect um, Ingredion to um, continue to invest, um, but in a very um, responsible and accountable way uh, to deliver shareholder value um, because that's what we're all you know, responsible for doing, but we want to do it uh, through and with our employees, and uh, and do it in a fun and uh, and and and, and purpose-driven way. 
Um, again, to our audience, I, I can assure you that this these are not new thoughts for Jim. I was actually reading a letter that he wrote to investors several years ago where he mentioned investments in customer intimacy, driving innovation, and, and all things digital transformation. And you know, I remember uh, seeing the date of the letter, and that was before a lot of other CEOs have been talking about this. So this is coming from a place of um, you know of experience, um, Jim. Thank you for your thoughts today. Um, everyone loves listening to these informal conversations with leaders like yourself. You know, thank you for everything that you do to move the industry forward um, and for bringing people, nature, and technology together to make life better. Uh, to our audience, again, you know, Ingredion is the partner to help you always be what's next. I can't wait to see where Ingredion goes next, especially when it relates to digital. Um, thank you again, Jim, for all your thoughts. Thank you, Ali. Take care.